Clayton Christensen Institute for Disruptive Innovation designed four models of blended learning. Remember in Module 1 that we defined blended learning as a combination of both face-to-face -face and online learning. The International Association of K-12 Online Learning's graphic titled The Defining Dimensions of Blended Learning Models laid out blended learning as a continuum of various models that combined online and face-to-face -face instructional practices. The Clayton Christensen Institute breaks blended learning down into four key models, rotation, flex, a la carte, and enriched virtual. Let's start with rotation. The rotation model includes any program where students rotate between learning modalities such as small group activities, full group lectures, group projects, individual tutoring, or pencil and paper tasks. The model is broken down into four more specific sub-models. The station rotation reminds me of my own elementary classroom experiences. Students rotate among classroom-based activities and modalities. Students move from station to station. Sometimes we call these centers. Small student groups may move between stations that include small group instruction with a teacher or individual pencil and paper work to a reading corner or a listening station and always to at least one station that allows for online learning. This model works great in the classroom with a small group of two to five student desktop computers. Many elementary teachers may already be implementing this form of blended instruction and not realize that they're already engaging students in online learning. The second submodel of rotation is the lab rotation. This model resembles the station rotation but expands on the campus facilities beyond a single classroom. The lab rotation model has students moving from classrooms with traditional learning modalities to a computer lab specifically designed to support online learning. We likely see something similar to this happening in many middle and high schools as students rotate into computer labs to learn about software applications. However, expanding these opportunities to include online learning makes it a blended learning experience. The third submodel is one that has a catchy name, the flipped classroom. This model is credited to Mr. Bergman and Mr. Sams at Woodland Park High School who were recording class lectures for absent students and posting them online. These teachers found that all students could benefit from accessing class lectures at their own pace from home and spend precious limited class time getting questions answered and working on projects. The Clayton Christensen Institute expands on this definition to state that students rotate between teacher-guided practice on campus during the school day and online delivery of content and instruction at a remote location, like their home after school. The last submodel of rotation includes individual rotation. In this submodel, students rotate on a custom or individualized schedule among learning modalities, at least one of which is online learning. Students get a more customized learning experience as individual students are guided by their teacher to learn online and using other modalities. I've seen clever teachers practice this model as a differentiation strategy in classroom with students who need remediation or extension activities. These four rotation subcategories can help any classroom teacher provide blended opportunities to his or her students. The second model is classified by the Institute as the flex model. This model depends heavily on an online learning program that students access on an individual path or pace. An on-site teacher provides face-to-face -face learning support on a flexible or as-needed basis. These teachers may also facilitate group projects or provide individual tutoring. The third model is called the a la carte model. In this model, students take one or more courses entirely online with an online teacher, while that student's other courses are taken at the traditional brick and mortar school. This model works well for students who need to recover credits or want to take a class that's not available at their local school due to low enrollment or the lack of a qualified teacher in that subject area. The fourth and last model is the enriched virtual model. This is similar to the flipped classroom model in that students access the content and instructional delivery off-site, but students seldom attend the brick and mortar school. It's also similar to the a la carte model 
in that whole courses are taken online. However, the Enrich Virtual Model is a whole school experience for the student. Every class is taken online with only occasional visits to a school building for face-to-face -face instructional support. You can read about real examples of each of these models of blended learning by browsing the Blended Learning Universe linked in our course materials. Perhaps you've already been providing your students with blended learning experiences. Have you seen any of these models practiced in your school or district? Different models work best for different contexts and learning goals. Do you have some new ideas about how you can incorporate blended learning in your classroom?